Now what you gonna do with it? 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 I put that brick in your face. High school, I was on the football team. Did pretty good football. I started all three years that I played. And did awesome, but my one coach, Carlos, you know, strength coach, he always, always bitched at me. Oh, you're just too fucking strong. You don't even know how strong you are. He just always did it to me. So started using things from there. Did a powerlift when I was 18. Bob did not a deadlift. And I just kind of faded after that. Started playing a lot of rugby, and then. It was like 2010, I was like, fuck, almost 400 pounds, sloppy as fuck, and I'm like, looking at my, one of my good friends, Phil Murphy, he's just 200 pounds and shredded, like just doing dumbass shit, having a blast, but he's always in the weight room, mm. got jealous of his lifestyle, I was working third shift, I was like, fuck it, I can do this, and <clears throat> just did a complete transformation. Three, four years later, uh, we're up in Kiwani, Illinois. The lifting with a few friends that I knew and met, they like we like lifting heavy every day. That's all we did. Yeah, maxing out. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just maxing out like crazy. Kind of teasing in a bit. <laughs> right. Oh no! no, no. You got it. You got it. Run, 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 run. Yeah! Guys, we went to this charity event, and these guys are like, you guys from Jack Jim, Byron and Tony and Patrick Warren and all those guys are like, you guys are just strong as fuck, but you're just cock strong. Like, you have no idea what you're capable of. So, ever since then, signed up for a meet and been a fucking roller coaster since. Uh, it was February, UPA Nationals, uh, February 2014, and uh, totaled at 750 plus squat. I actually walked it out because that's all I was used to. I was like, I literally sat in the hole, paused it, went up, 440 bench, pulled out of my ass. I think I deadlifted like 716 on my second attempt, but just missed 750. Uh, 1906 total, 12th in the country. Everybody, right yeah, everybody, everybody's like, oh my god, like, you don't know what you just did. I was like, no, what, what did I just do? Right. And I just had no fucking clue. And things just kind of took off from there. And I signed up for another meet, like, four weeks away. Got an 18-22 total. It didn't even work, but I was just trying to shoot for numbers that weren't there. and Didn't know what the hell I was doing, like, training-wise. Didn't know what the hell I was doing, supplement-wise. Like, I just... Hey, let's do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there's another UP me farther down the road, and I asked uh, Eric to coach me, Eric Oldbridge. I ended up totaling like 2077, so knocking on the door, tw knocking on the door, 2100. That was your first 2,000 pound total? Yeah, first sanctioned 2,000 pound total. Yeah, cool. Cool. Favorite? Uh, fun wise, would have been Rome. Rome was a lot of fun just because there's a lot of big names there. Of course, I knew everybody. Like, barely anybody knew me. So, not many people know this, but when I get nervous, I just fucking stutter the shit out of my words, or I'll just do dumb shit with my hands. So that's where this came in. So I'm walking through the meet, nervous as shit, seeing all these guys that I just, like, fucking adored the last 10 months of my life. And I'm, like, playing the circle game, I'm like, hi, how's it going, you know? Just being, yeah, being a fucking idiot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I honestly went down there without a clue of even winning, and I pulled it off. I know that uh, John Carson from Canada, he had like an 8.93 deadlift. And I was like, I was like, there's no way I was going to beat this guy. But I ended up, I pulled 8.10, 
and I changed my attempt last minute. He changed his attempt to 893 and just missed it. I got to thank uh, Jim Grandick and Big Iron Crew for that because they were down there and they told me, just wait for him, just wait for him. He'll jump the gun. Oh, no, uh, that was the funnest, per se. In the first year, I was, I was a fucking wreck. I was, I was a wreck. First year was kind of a fluke thing. Uh, Kevin Oaks' plane got delayed from LaGuardia, but Eric Schwartz got a hold of me the night before. It was like 11 or like 10.45, and I'm laying down in the hotel room bed, and I'm almost asleep, and I get this zzz. Hey, Dan, you want to lift the cage tomorrow afternoon? And I... I remember I replied back to him like you just made this guy's dream come sure. true. Like you have no I was like I would love to. Oh god, I was nervous. Chad West Smith was walking in there, Brandon Lilly was hopping around on crutches and I'm just like, Oh my god. You know, I met Derek Kendall a few times because we were both kinda on you know, both trained together a few times and we lived a little close together so we knew each other pretty good. So he kept me a little comfortable. Tom Kels, he was in there too. It was Pretty, pretty nerve-wracking. Yeah. I, I think I worked up to 925, and I'm like, okay, that's good, that's good. We'll call it a day. Cool. <laughs> so it wasn't really any set plan that first year? No, yeah. no, no. I, well, it was like three months before that, I had 914 at Rum, and I hadn't been training that consistent. Actually, the night before, that, that night before, I went to a gym in Columbus, and I hit like, I worked up to 600 pause squats, just set of five, and I'm like, okay, training's done. I'm here for the Arnolds, you know, the off-season type thing. The second year, I knew I was going for a grand. I, I got never wrecking because I stumbled on 905 with a 955. Yeah. But then, of course, uh, stepped up to the plate on 1,000. Threw the dip in and fucking smoked that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Hug Ben packed her hard for me. Yep. Went to town. <laughs> So, uh, what was going through your mind during, uh, you know, your warm-ups this year? This year, it, it was second nature to me this year. Yeah, uh, honestly, kind of yeah. I know the, the crowd was, it seemed like the crowd was uh, was just as good as it has been. You know, they were always just slam pack full of people screaming. You know, Instagram fans, Facebook people, oh, yeah. you, people that you don't see on a normal basis. That's why I, I love the Arnold's because it's just people you usually get to see once or twice a year. Mm. And, uh, you know, just, it was good. I, I really, I enjoyed it a lot more this year than I had the last two years, because the last two years I was so nervous. I knew I was going to work up to a grand. I didn't know I was going to double it. I mean, of course, I would have loved to throw 1030 or 1050 on and saw him where I could take it, but after that first one, I was like, this is way too easy. Right, yeah, you smoked. <laughs> right, yeah. Who, who doubles a grand? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, Cheeks Rosenberg, yeah, Cheeks, he, uh, we <laughs> trained in the other XPF, but um, it, it stuck with me and it st stuck with him. You know, we, I don't know if he said it first or if I said it first, but we just kind of, you know, so we used to train together all the time. He's, he's, he's got it on the inside of his belt, I got it in the inside of my old belt. That's what powerlifting is, you know, you're yeah. just trying to be legendary. Right. You want your name to last the longest. I mean, look at Ed. Look at you know anybody that's been legendary Something. in the powerlifting yeah. world. You know, it, that that's what you want. You just want to be remembered. And if if you are, you are. If you aren't, you aren't. You know, who knows? You know, you, as long as you know you went out there and gave your all, that's all that really matters. Man. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jeff Hall. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Actually, you. Uh, you were one of the first few, you, Megan, uh, just people close. You know, I I still don't throw it out there publicly that I'm coaching, but I, I mean, I do do online coaching. I've done quite a few people, people from Florida, people from 
I don't want to say all over the world, but I've helped. I, when it was June or July last year when I started, or it been May when I started coaching you. This is when I started my other job, travel job. Powerlifting took a back seat. And now I feel like coaching you and watching what the, the knowledge that I know in the sport and throwing it onto you and seeing what we can do or throwing it onto anybody that I coach, that fills my bucket while I'm while I'm not putting powerlifting first. You, you can tell it's pretty difficult for me to come in and try to be a coach and try to peak for myself. Right. You know, I, I've even said to you a couple of times, it's hard for me to go to a meet and coach and try to compete at the yeah. same time. Because it's just like, you know, I'm trying to focus on my stuff, but I care, it feels like I care more about you guys. I mean, it's, how much, how bad you want it at the end of the day. Oh, this is the, the PR celebrations. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I, when I first started, I, uh, I had a general idea of how to peak people. I mean, it's not tough. I had a general idea how to notice the little things you could do to compete because I made the same mistakes when I was coming up with powerlifting. The PR celebrations, the thank yous, the, you know, 165er now. He's got an American record. You know, yeah. the, the kid fucking gets a hold of me every day. Hey, thanks a ton, man. What should I do this week? I was like, you're a knowledgeable lifter. You're seasoned as shit. I, you're in off season. I'll tell you what to do. Have some fucking fun. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what that little fucker does too. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's a hobby. Yeah, it's a hobby. People don't take it too serious. I took it too serious. When you when you do that, when you throw everything in your life away, or I don't say away, but to put it to the back burner, it does. Didn't make me a happy individual. Right. It's not worth it. I, I didn't think it was worth it. And now there, I, I still see people today that, of course, they throw everything they have into powerlifting and they're like, it's, it's not, not a fucking hobby. hobby. Let's see your too. fucking W2. <laughs> you know? Show me that W2. <laughs> but at the same time, some people will argue, you know, you got to kind of do that to get to the top. What would be your counter? And that's if, if that's your calling, if you want to live that lifestyle. Yeah. Like, then, then sure. But I'm perfectly comfortable by it. Construction job, making the money I do. Mm. And coming home every few weeks and put food on the table. That's my biggest thing to the new guys. And I tell them, take two steps back. Keep it fun. Because everybody wants to make it so serious. Everything, everybody wants everything right now. Oh, yeah. You don't go from 1906 to 2375 overnight. It took me almost four years. And I had a lot of form more than anything. I was strong enough. I was just stupid. It was a hobby and you got out of patience. Yeah. <laughs> oh, short term? Get my chickens laid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm chilling right now. I'm uh, I'm enjoying life. Just, you know, working, lifting, having fun, coaching still. We got quite a few guys competing next weekend. I got or two weeks and I got couple more guys coming up in July. It's just let's still fill my bucket pretty good and entertaining with those guys, but I'm trying to reconstruct everything and try to build my base up. I really, really want to bring my game for October. Mm -hmm. That's that's my plan. Which was the next topic? Big dogs, Australia. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, we coming. Yeah, I got mentioned too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, everybody knows now I'm going, so yeah. I'm. Uh, um, I give everything I got. Plan on working with Ed Cohen a lot, trying to critique a lot of things and fix some things and just just bring my game. I'm going up April the US Open and help uh, help handle Andre for, for that. And then him and I go head to head, so it'll be it'll be real good. I mean I know there's Andre's not the only guy I gotta watch out for either. Or Sean Doyle, that fucking strong asshole. I see him and Duffin going, I was like, God. One day, I just want to be as strong as these guys. <laughs> Man, so many big name guys on the list right now. Yeah. It's just, I mean, just like the US Open, who knows who's really going to show up, but my plane ticket's right next to the bot, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to go through a huge process for a damn passport. I'm, there's no way I'm not going now. I was going to buy another gun just for that. <laughs> <laughs> Any last comments you want to leave? Oh, uh, no. Um, like, follow, share, uh, E.G. Barbell. So, home number one now for me. Trying to do big things, trying to help out the community and 
get the ball rolling here in Dubuque, Iowa. See what we can do. Right. A lot of strong folk. Well, thanks a lot for your time. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Look slide! Let's go! Say, bro, I love you to death, but bitch, you gon' hit it, or you gon' lay on Dude, top of it. Get the fuck up, nigga, you ain't dead, shit. Just got this word from above, placing my heart in this message. Evil's after your soul, people smart with deception. Keep a sharp observation.